Welcome back to another one of my vlogs. In this vlog, I'm gonna talk about how I updated my app on Google Play using Android app bundles in the new developer console. And I didn't just do this because I wanted to show you how to do it. My app in production, well, I guess in, in uh, I think it's in beta, beta or alpha, one of those. It's on the Play Store, it's in alpha or beta, I can't remember which one. And yesterday it got a huge amount of traffic, comparatively anyway, comparatively to how much traffic it typically gets, and it ran into some issues. So I'm gonna talk about how I debugged this issue uh, through Crashlytics, so Firebase Crashlytics, and then the the how I pushed that change out to production to my app. Now, for those of you who don't follow my shit vlogs, let me uh, let me show you the app that I'm talking about, the app that I have on the Play Store, and talk about uh, a little bit about what it does and why it broke down and how I kind of debugged that process. So I live in British Columbia, Canada. Let me launch the app for you here. This app will show all of the power outages in the province where I live. So it gets this information from the, the service provider in my province, there's only one service provider, and I can like zoom in and you can see like, you know, there's tons and tons of power outages. This is actually the next day, but last night it was even worse. And all of these little markers uh, denote like a, a power outage area. And if you scroll in, you can kind of see like the specific area where that power outage is occurring. So you can see it kind of like all in red on the map. And you can filter this by various, various ways you know i can go up here click a region i live in lower mainland sunshine coast so i'll click on that then the map updates to show only that region and i could like then further uh, filter this by selecting a mus municipality and i can select one doesn't really matter which one let's say chilliwack and then it zooms in on that specific region or that specific city within the region. So of course, because there was all of these power outages yesterday, the app was kind of over, overflowing with data. It got way more information than it was used to handling. And it got more users also because people downloaded the app trying to figure out, well, what the hell is going on? Why why are there power outages? Because the app will actually give you information about like, you know, the ETA of, of when the power is gonna get restored, where the power outage occurred, when it occurred, if a crew has been assigned to the to the restoration process, all of these kind of things. So it's it's an information app basically. So anyway, I woke up this morning and I checked my Firebase Crashlytics and I was getting some some crashes. Let's actually go to my Firebase console and I'm gonna show you the, the Crashlytics that I woke up to. So here we are in my Firebase console. I have the Crashlytics section highlighted over here and you can see that there is a bunch of crashes. You know, I'm only 75% crash free. So we got some problems. So let's, uh, let's take a look here. So the main problem here, well, there's actually only one problem, these two are both related, is this binder.java file and binderproxy.java. So of course you, you look at that and you're like, okay, I have no idea what that means. But if you look here, it gives you a little bit more information. It says transaction to large exception, data parcel size is, how many bytes is that? That is 1,379,132 bytes. And if you were to convert that into megabytes, guess how much that is? That is uh, 1.379132 megabytes. So it's greater than one megabyte. Now, if you Google the um, parcel size, the allowed parcel size on Android, you can find this document in the Android documentation. And somewhere in here, it says that um, the maximum parcel size is one meg megabyte. So it says the binder transaction buffer has a limited fixed size, currently one megabyte, which is shared by all transactions, blah, 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 blah. Blah. Basically what this means is you can't have a parcel or a bundle or something saved to the instant state because those use bundles that's larger than one megabyte. So I'm thinking, I'm sitting back and I'm thinking, okay, I think I know what the problem is. I actually know exactly what the problem is. And this is funny because I didn't even follow my own advice. Like in my courses on codingwithmitch.com, I actually teach people, I, I tell people to do certain things to avoid this specific issue. I say don't save like large lists of data to your out state, to your instant state, because you can get this, this error and then your app will crash. So it's kind of funny that I didn't follow my own advice, but I guess I never thought that, that we would have this many power outages. I think there was like, I don't know, over 200 power outages in, in the province. So because of that, um, what I was doing, I'll actually just show you in the code. So here in Android Studio, if you look at my on save instant state, this is the fragment for the map, by the way. This is the fragment that displays this map. So if I kind of clear all of this and go show all outages, it's gonna show all the outages. You can see that there was a ton of them and there was more yesterday. So what I'm doing here is when the, when the screen is rotated or when the app goes to the background, I save 
variables to the out state. What I'm saving is, you know, what outage is selected, uh, what region is selected, what municipality, the camera position, all of those things are fine. The problem is this variable right here, the view state, because the view state contains all the information for all of the GPS coordinates of all of the outages. So you can imagine, you know, I got a list of over a hundred outages here and each one of those outages, if you zoom in really close, contains like a whole bunch of GPS coordinates, you know, like this big, big area here that you see could be hundreds and hundreds of GPS coordinates to highlight that that region on the map. So all of these have tens or hundreds of GPS coordinates to highlight the region that the outage is that the outage is affecting. So this could potentially be a lot of data. And that's what ended up being the issue. Or that's what I think is the issue. Anyway, that's the fix that I'm going to implement. So let's, uh, let's, I'm going to press uh, control Z here, and I'm going to show you the fix that I implemented. So what you want to do is you want to null out the list of polygon outages. Don't don't pay attention to the terminology here. You could just say basically at the end of the day, what you want to do is you don't want to save a big list to your out state. That's pretty much what I'm doing. So I'm getting the view state. I'm nulling out that big list of GPS coordinates basically, and then I'm setting the view state and then, then I'm saving that to the bundle. So effectively what I'm doing is instead of um, saving all of the GPS coordinates to the bundle and then restoring them, I'm just gonna re-query them after the rotation or after the app comes back from the background. Now this is gonna be like, marginally slower obviously for the user like they have to re-query those coordinates instead of i mean they're just going to get it from the cache anyway so really there's there's probably actually absolutely no difference because getting it from the cache is super fast anyway so it doesn't really matter but um it's just funny that i didn't follow my own advice like i i specifically say don't do this and then i did it and my app crashed well anyway let's uh let's let's now go over how to uh, produce a release build and update your Google Play developer console with this new release. All right, so here's my fix. I've implemented my fix. Obviously, I committed this to Git. So if I press, you know, control K, you can see that there's not really any changes here um, other than the version code, which I'm going to go over that in a second here. So I've obviously already pushed that stuff to my remote branch so that these changes will be reflected on Git. Um, make sure you have your release build selected over here before you build it. And one last thing before you create your new release build is you want to increment the version code. So the way I've set up my end Android Studio is I don't have all of this stuff in my build.gradle file. I have my version code kind of abstracted out. But if you don't do this, then let me just find my build.gradle file. Um, that's not the right one. Let me scroll up a little bit here. There's the build.gradle app file. So what you want to do here is the version code, this version code right here, whatever this version code is, you need to increment it before you build a new release build. I have this abstracted out, like I said, into this kind of application singleton object. Um, my previous version code was five, so I've incremented it to six since I've implemented this new fix. Now that's all you, all you need to do. Basically just two things, implement the fix, increment the version code, and now you're ready to build a new uh, release build. So now what you want to do is go up to build and do generate signed bundle slash APK. This is for the Play Store. Now, depending on if you originally used APK or Android app bundles, you would select one or the other. I used Android app bundles, so I'm going to click on next. Type in all of your information, your key store, your key store password, alias, uh, key password, that kind of stuff. Click next. Make sure to select the release build when you generate this uh, bundle click finish, and then that's gonna generate your new bundle that you can then move to your Google Play Developer Console. Now, inside of the Developer Console, this is the new Developer Console, which I'm not super familiar with, but I do know how to set a new release build. So you wanna go down to, uh-oh, I forgot, somewhere in testing. I think it's maybe open testing, since I believe I'm in alpha. Uh, yes, I think that was correct. Or oh, sorry, I'm in beta, looks like I'm in beta. So what I would do is up here, there would be like a button that says create new release. I've already started that process. Oh, that's the button right there. So you can see it's kind of uh, grayed out because I've already clicked it. So you're gonna wanna create, click on that. Um, since I've already done that, I'm gonna click on edit down here to this untitled release. Now I want to find where that release is in my project. So I would go, my, my project is BC Hydro Outages, go into app, go into release, and then drag this app release.aab file into your developer console. So dragging that in there, that's gonna then upload. It's gonna tell you if there's any problems, anything you need to do. Uh, while that does that, I wanna go down here and 
write some release notes. So, I mean, I don't know, it, depending on if you wanna make this meaningful for the user or just meaningful for you as the developer, uh, those are kind of the two different approaches here. I'm gonna make it meaningful for the developer because this is kind of a, a, a play project for me anyway, so I don't really care. I'm gonna say fix parcels, uh, I'll say overflow issue. Um, greater than greater than one megabyte, I guess. That Then I at least know what that means. Doesn't really matter if users know what that means. That's okay. So looks like I need to use a different version code or APK. Um, I already have one with version six. So that, I think that's because earlier I kind of started uploading one and then I canceled it. Either way, that's fine. I'm gonna increment this to six or to seven then. And I'm gonna build a new one. So generate sign bundle slash APK. Next, next, finish. That's gonna generate that for me. Doesn't matter. As soon as that's done generating, I should see this refreshed. Okay, looks good. I noticed the timestamp changed there. So that means Android Studio is done. Uh, so I'm gonna drag that in there. It's gonna upload. And this time it should work because I've incremented that version code to seven. Okay, it looks like it's good to go. Um, this version, this error is not actually being thrown. I just said right here, version seven has been uploaded. So I want to save and then I can review release and we should be pretty much good to go here. And it's giving me a warning telling me I need to, uh, I need to de-obfuscate, but I don't care. Again, not top priority right now. Uh, let's uh, start the rollout. So just make sure I got, uh, I don't know, it's probably all good. Let's start the rollout. So, you know, a couple of things to take away from this video. Number one, Crashlytics. Crashlytics are your friend. You you always want to use Crashlytics unless you have some other crash reporting software that we, you, you're using. It's just, it's just so easy to use. You know, you barely have to do anything in your project. You just add some dependencies and automatically you get all of these really like detailed crash reports on Firebase. It's really awesome. It even sends you emails. Like I said, I woke up in the morning, saw the email. I said, huh, that issue is different. I'll take a look and then, you know, boom, push out a fix. So that's number one takeaway. Firebase is awesome. Number two takeaway is listen to uh, listen to my advice, and even I should listen to my advice uh, when I tell when I say don't save big bundle objects or big objects to the bundle because you will run into issues, which I have just run into an issue as you can see. But lesson learned, you know, we pushed out a fix, we fixed the problem, it's all good you know, issue neutralized. That's going to be it for this video. Do not forget to check out codingwithmitch.com for the best Android courses on the planet. And yes, I mean that there's nobody out there who makes better Android courses than me. Topics on Kotlin. We got some Java stuff, although it's older. Coroutines, uh, MVI architecture, which is my favorite. Clean architect, I should say, MVI architectural design pattern. That's probably a better way to put it. Clean architecture, which I would say is my favorite architecture. Actually, MVI with clean architecture is my favorite. And I got courses on that stuff, so don't worry. We got stuff for beginners. We got stuff for advanced users, all kinds of stuff. And if you want to know what people are saying about my website, head on over to codingwithmitch.com slash testimonials. There's you know, I think 800 or 900 testimonials at this point. I don't do anything to police them. I let anybody leave a testimonial. I never change them. I never delete them. So you can go there and read what people are saying about my, my content. If it's helpful, some people are getting jobs. Some people are getting help with their studies, all kinds of different scenarios. Codingwithmitch.com. Codingwith I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video.